Hello, everybody. Um, if you're watching the earlier live stream uh, that ended in flames and terror and screaming, <laughs> I'm not sure what happened. My, I don't know if that was a YouTube thing or my computer thing, but uh, it just exploded and I couldn't do anything. <laughs> anyway, back to where we were at. So I was live, I was doing, I'm doing a live build of the new Lego passenger sharing set, uh, 61, 60197. Um, so far, I'm most of the way through the locomotive. I've done the little details of platform stuff and everything so far. Um, and if you want to, uh, go back later and watch all the gory details of the uh, previous live stream and uh, <laughs> things exploding. Go right ahead. Um, let's pick up where we left off. Um, if you're just joining us, you're in for a wonderful night of me fumbling with bags and dropping parts and um, generally trying to struggle through my, my way through building a Lego set live on the air. <laughs> which apparently has ended has, has not gone according to plan so far but hopefully this will work better anyway nose piece that's right we get to do our uh, our big nose piece you know some people don't necessarily care for these um, big nose pieces, but honestly, um, I think it's probably the best way to do it. Um, you could brick build a nose, but I think it would be kind of tricky. Um, especially in this small size to, uh, to get it right and uh, to get it to get it to look right and to uh, uh, get a nice sleek shape without resorting to some very sketchy build techniques that Lego doesn't necessarily want to probably use in one of their sets. So And I think this note piece actually looks fairly good for what it is. It seems to fit a lot better than some of the previous nose pieces they've come up with. Um, and I don't know if there's a... Glenn is silently monitoring this so that hopefully it doesn't blow up again. If you're out there, Glenn, is there a chat feature on this? Because <laughs> I don't see any chat on here. Um, if not, that's okay. Um, I would just uh, keep talking like a raving lunatic while building a train set. Ooh. And then we got our two little tiles for the lights, which I don't have yet, but I will be ordering this week because I finally found them on the Shop Home website. They don't make them easy to find. You have to look, you have to actually enter in the part number. There is no, no regular listing for them, as far as I've found. We've got our green button here. Oh, shoot. Ooh, that looks terrible. I got to see if I can redo that. And... Thank you. 
Okay, that looks less terrible. So this is kind of neat. So, <laughs> now I put the darn thing on. So in order for uh, you to be able to turn on and off the battery and still have the battery box kind of down in there, so it's not um, intrusive, Lego has come up with this, um, <laughs> I guess you could call it a button extension. So. This piece allows you to push the button on the uh, powered up controller while still having the controller down in there. So that's kind of cool. It's a neat idea on their part. Um, also, I've never seen this piece before this set, so. Um, I like it. It's a nice catenary piece. If I open the stream as if to watch it, oh, shoot. All right, hold on. Let me see here. Glenn is, Glenn is giving me instructions on how to open this and see uh, chat. I think. Hold on. I'm terrible at this, so my apologies. Hey. Oop. There we are. Um, wow, that's weird. That's freaky. I'm looking into the past. When will then be now? Soon. All right, so what's going on in the chat? Sorry about the issues, blah, 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 blah. blah. Uh, have I done a Western Maryland Railroad Lego train? Well, I've done a couple Western Maryland things so far. Um, I have I have done a, a, a little Russian decapod in Western Maryland. I've done a little, well, yeah, I've done that. Um, I have tried to do a Potomac, but that didn't turn out very well. That was a couple years ago. Um, oh. I did I did a Challenger, gosh, that might be three or four years ago now. <laughs> now that I think about it. I did a Challenger a couple years ago. Um, and that was mildly successful. Um, I've done some rolling stock, some freight cars, some mostly box cars, um, and a couple cabooses. But I'd say probably the little Russian decapod is probably my um, my uh, most successful Western Maryland engine. Um, and by successful, I mean it runs. Um, that one's probably my oldest locomotive and is very much in need of an update. 
So on to bag four. So hopefully I will get that. But I may be doing a new Western Maryland locomotive uh, sometime in the near future. Um, like I've, I think I've all but convinced myself that my next one will be Western Maryland. Um, I'm not telling you which one yet. Uh, but I'm 95% certain that it's going to be a Western Maryland engine. Hold on. I'm switching back and forth between streams. Uh, All right, that's better. Anyway, our next our locomotive is all done now. Um, what a fine engine that she is. I like the color scheme. Of course I would like it. Dark blue. <laughs> All right, moving on to, I guess you would call this the cafe car. All right, we've got our uh, cafe attendant here. Where is, where is where's the legs? There they are. Get yourself together, girl. <laughs> Why has it taken Lego so long to come up with the hot dog bun part? They've had the hot dog piece. They've, they've had the actual hot dog for years, but until recently, they didn't have buns for them. Why? I mean, how else are you supposed to eat a hot dog? With a knife and fork? That's just barbaric. <laughs> anyway. Oops. Fumbling with parts and dropping bags. All right. Let's see here. Oh no. More stickers. I mean, as I said in my previous stream, I don't mind the fact that they're doing that they use stickers instead of, you know, printing all the parts because that makes the parts more useful. But also, stickers can be a pain to put on, so it's a double-edged sword. But I will take the stickers because it means. I don't have to have whatever they want on whatever image they want on the part on that part if I don't want to. <laughs> and one more. Here it 
Um, there we go. I see five people watching, but no one's chatting. Say something, dang it. You're lonely. I guess I should be lucky that there's six people watching after crashing and burning in the last live stream just a couple minutes ago. This set is littered with the iconic red Lego coffee cup. There's three of them in this cafe car. Three. No seats in this car though, so everyone has to stand. And then, oh yay, more stickers. I'm losing my mind. So, I'm missing. Where did that go? I seem to be missing a dark blue one by two brick. It's not in any of the bags. I don't think I dropped it. What the heck? Seriously? That sucks. I'm pretty sure I didn't drop it. I don't see it on the floor. 
Man. I hope that's not Lego production quality going down the drain and they're just missing parts. Is this the second part I'm missing? And I don't I don't see it anywhere. That's kind of annoying. Hmm. Hmm. It's very annoying. Especially when it's a dark blue one by two brick. It's not. Guess uh. I guess I'll be calling customer service. Unless for unless unless I did drop it on the floor, but I do not see it anywhere. Hmm. Let me down, Lego. I can't get the decal off either. <laughs> by two brick. I just looked ahead in the instructions. That part, that part where I thought that one by two brick should be each is actually a couple of plates. So, all right, I didn't drop a part, and they didn't lose the part. And Lego didn't not send me the part. It wasn't supposed to be there to begin with. I was just getting ahead of myself and not properly reading the directions. <laughs> Oops. All right. Oh, great. Hey, there's like chatting going on. Any of your viewers already have a message? Oh, that's Glenn. Ah, oh, yes. You already asked that question, Ryan, about the the Fairbanks Sea Liner. Um, and he said, I like Fairbanks Morse, but so probably the Sea Liner is not necessarily my first choice of, of Fairbanks locomotives I want to do. Um, I actually have done one Fairbanks Morse previously at an H1044. Um, which is a switcher, um, but that one's a fairly old one. Oh, I already have it on there. Um, I want to do a train master uh, soon. When I say soon, I mean within the next probably five years. <laughs> the way my the way my build list is, it'll probably take that long to get there. Nice tinted windows in the set. I don't really care for the tinted windows too much. I, I much prefer the. I much prefer just the straight clear. Um, but then I'm. My preference is towards. Oops. 
my preference is towards older trains. So naturally, I want just clear glass for those. There I go, getting ahead of myself again. I think I'd be smarter than that. Anyway. And... Oh. I already did that. Diaphragms here. So our passengers can travel between cars. However, they can't get into the car from the outside, though, because these passenger cars have no doors. Why? Is it that hard for you to include doors in the passenger cars, Lego? Hmm? Seriously. Doors. They're they're wonderful items. They're they allow you to get in and out of things. They allow you to go from an interior space to an exterior space. And vice versa. You should really try and add doors to the next passenger train set. It'd be awesome. All right. On to bag, whatever, five. All right. Um, <laughs> um, how's it? Maybe I'll find time to build BMR kits, much less my own models. <laughs> yeah. I wish. I wish I had more time to build myself. Um, but it seems I'm always busy with other stuff. Anyway, Six times. Mm -hmm. 
Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> more tiles, more tiles, more tiles. Carriage. Got a, uh, I what this is. I don't know in a second once I finish, once I get to the details. Um, And like I said previously, they didn't have to use reddish brown in there, but I'm thankful they did. I I like it when they stick interesting and useful colors in, even if they don't necessarily need to. It's, it's always nice. All right. Uh, We have, we have electric and pneumatics. Now we have water and oil. Two. I'm not sure why they have oil on the pa oil tanks on the passenger cars. I'm not sure why they have an oil tank on a pass on an electric train to begin with. Um, unless unless they're uh, unless they're running like a separate generator unit or something. It, it seems odd they would do that anyway it's lego land it's fantasy you know um <laughs> what do they know yeah i've been going at this almost two hours now minus the uh um giant computer glitch a little earlier so I'm not doing too bad I don't think I'm almost finished with 
first passenger car, which just leaves one more passenger car yet. And then in this set, we'll be done. And this live stream will be in the books. Hopefully, the next time I do this, it will go a little bit better. <laughs> Certainly was a certainly didn't go according to plan this time. <laughs> Again, tan door rail. They, they didn't need to put that there. There's no reason to put a tan door rail there. But I'm thankful they did, because you know, that's a useful, interesting part. Our cafe car. Got the... Uh, Removable roof. Got our oop. cafe attendant stuck inside the car here. Hold on. Ah. Terrible. Come on. There we go. <laughs> Mine's just got a cramped little space in there. Also, there's no way to get past her to get to the end of the, end of the car. Six wide. <laughs> All right. Add that to our growing train back there. All right, last car. We've got our coach. Hmm. Track, we don't need the track right now. Let's see, these games. Yeah. Uh, yes, the two cars are different. Um, one is a, a cafe car, um, or a dining. Well, yeah, cafe car. It's not really a dining car, um, per se. A dining car would have more sit down seating arrangements and this is just kind of like a light like a snack car snack car type deal and then the one i'm working on now is a coach car it's where it's got all the passenger seating in um speaking of which, Decals again. There's a lot of repetitive decaling in this set. Each of the cars gets the same set of decals, basically, on four corners. 
Um, there's the same set of decals for the middle of the cars. And there are a smaller side decal too. So, so when you're like me and have big fat fingers, it can be a little um, <laughs> a little extra challenging. There we go. Uh, only three watching. I must be terrible. That's okay. I'm doing this as much for my entertainment as I am for your entertainment. <laughs> oh, wait, four, four watching. Oh, man. We're going up again. Dare we get to five? I don't know. <laughs> but like I said, I'm I'm not con too concerned with viewership. Um, I'm just doing this to. Do it. Yeah. See, have a have a little fun while building uh, the drain set. People want to watch and hang out and chat. They can. If you don't, well, you don't have to. Said it. I said it when we started. I think um, in the previous live stream before that exploded. That I actually do really like this train. I like the color scheme. I like the overall design. Um, I think it's a really nice looking train. It's got a nice, nice, interesting look to it. It's a very sleek looking train. Um, my thoughts on the powered up system aside, which um, I don't, I don't think I care too much for the powered up system. Um, uh, the powered up system itself, I don't care too much for, um, mainly because it's it's got a lot of limitations built into it that um, I think hamper its usability as far as like advanced building of Lego trains. Um, not being able to stack the connectors so you can run more than one motor off a port. That's a biggie. That's a huge, huge drawback. And a big downgrade from the, the previous power function system. Um, the Bluetooth connection we've found has had issues in 
in large crowd settings, like at a convention, you know, at a train show and stuff. Um, it, 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 the connection, it, the, it, it doesn't like the interference of the other, of all the other Bluetooth uh, devices in large crowds. Um, but we've been, um, I've been finding that that's like a common problem with Bluetooth controllers. Asperic, Buwiz, um, even PFX has, they've all had issues in that kind of setting where you've got large crowds and dozens and dozens of Bluetooth signals um, in the room. They, they all tend to have issues with that and, and don't work very well under those circumstances. So that's a, that's a huge drawback um, to using Bluetooth. Um, so I'm not, honestly, I'm not, uh, at first I thought, you know, when like the Asperic and then the Boo Wiz and the PFX came out and they were all using Bluetooth, I thought, oh, this is great. This is a lot better than IR because IR you had basically at a show, you had at most three to four foot of range and then you were done. So you had to be right on top of the train to control it with IR. And I thought, you know, Bluetooth. Oh man, this is gonna be awesome. I can be I can be anywhere around the layout and still control the train. I don't have to be right on top of it. I don't have to I don't have to actually have a clear line of sight between myself and the the train to control it. This would be great. But I've been finding out like Bluetooth is not it doesn't seem to be, Bluetooth is great, but it seems to be, it, it's not perfect. And you might, like, we might be able to work the issues out with like the, the, the interference issues out. I don't know. I'm not an electronics, I, I don't know much about electronics, so I don't know if that's a solvable problem or if that's just that's just a limitation of bluetooth and we got to deal with it but i i don't like it i i would much prefer like a uh, uh i would much prefer a radio control style setup something that is not necessarily Um, dependent on, well, it has its own dedicated radio frequency, I should say. And I've been looking into stuff, and a bunch of others have been looking into stuff. Um, but getting back to the the, the powered up, um, yeah, I, I'm I'm not a big fan of the powered up because of the the use of Bluetooth. Um, I do like the fact that they give you a controller, an actual physical controller you can use in addition to the app. I, 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 I'm not a big fan of controlling my trains through an app. It just, um, it's a gimmick to me, you know, it, it, um, Yeah, the Bluetooth just feels like a gimmick. It's like it, it's not it's not as convenient as I wish it would be, and and I just like I like the actual physical like pushing a button and turning a dial as opposed to like rubbing my finger over my screen to actually control something, especially a train. Um, I would much rather have a dedicated controller for, you know, controlling my trains. Uh, so, but the train itself 
this train itself is actually pretty nice. Um, I know it's 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 not <laughs> it's not uh, it's not my normal type of train that I build. Um, both, you know, I don't normally build high speed passenger modern high speed passenger trains, obviously, but also. <laughs> I don't normally build six wide. <laughs> um, but I think this is a, I, I do think this is a really nice set. I'm, I'm really happy with it. Uh, I, I, it's got a nice design, nice color scheme, all that. Um, And uh, as I said previously, I like the fact that they, the way they have it set up with only one engine and two cars. So this is actually my second set. If I, I mentioned that in the earlier stream. This is actually my second set. So I got two sets specifically so I could build them and put them together for a longer train because <laughs> why wouldn't you want a longer train, right? I think two of these together makes actually a pretty nice, pretty nice setup. Um, oh, your luggage may roll around. <laughs> anyway. How the sound? Ah, how the sound works. Well, the how does the sound work in my uh, Mamba two eight zero? It's easy. It's using a PF expert. <laughs> <coughs> so I'm uh, just using a um, just using off the shelf. Uh, I think the four megabit. PFX brick, um, and just the the standard the standard generic Steam profile that um, that PFX provides as a download on the website. Um, nothing terribly special about it. Um, you know, PFX speaker. I'm using the XL PFX speaker. Um, I'm using the standard PFX light board and uh, and it's all put in the tender. The only the only trick there is that I wasn't able to use a standard Lego battery for for power because I just did not have the room in the tender with everything else in there. So I used a custom battery. Um, it's a, uh, it's just a, it's just a, uh, well, it's a, uh, it's an off the shelf lithium ion battery. Um, it's uh, still 7.4 volts like the, uh, like the standard Lego rechargeable battery. Um, but it's smaller. It's uh, it doesn't have as much capacity. It's only a, I think this one's only seven hundred milliamp. Uh, the Lego battery is, I believe, eleven hundred milliamp. So it's, it's so you wouldn't get as long a run time as if I was using a standard Lego battery. But um, I still get the same voltage, so you know it'll still. So the the locomotive still has the same amount of power. Um, it just can't run as long. Um, and that standard that that 
that custom battery, all I had to do was basically just um, uh, put a uh, a power function a hook a, a solder power function plug onto the end of it and plug it into the PFX, and away we go. Um, Almost done. This would have been easier if I had a utility knife handy. Instead of scissors. Next time. Oops. Man, these axles roll well. Right off the table. <laughs> How do I pair the sound with the engine? Well, um, the the uh, sound profile that you download from PFX is already set up to be paired with the with uh, uh, the control input. So it's um, it's based on voltage, so or uh, or throttle. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it just reads the whatever throttle position, or it's actually based on the voltage going to the motor. I'm not sure. Um, but it's all done within the PFX brick. So you know, as you as you turn the as you turn your dial up, or or you know, or on the app you you know, push a slider or something to uh, make your locomotive go faster, it will, it will uh, increase the speed of the, uh, the sound. Um, now, it's not perfect. Um, there is some adjustability there, though. You can, you can adjust when the sound starts. So, you know, if you know your locomotive's not going to be starting immediately, you know, you have to turn it up to, like, speed step you know, turn it up a couple speed steps before it starts moving. You can have the sound set up so that it only comes on once you get to that certain speed step and then it goes from there. And then it'll, you know, you can also adjust it to um, on the uh, upper end as well. Um, but it takes a bit of fine tuning. I haven't quite, um, I haven't totally fine tuned my, uh, my PFX brick yet to work well. Um, but, you know, it's a pretty nice system. I never put the engineer in the cab. <laughs> anyway, here you have it. Ooh. Best. Thing wants to roll off the table. Stop that. <laughs> Gosh. Holy cow. Even the brick separator won't stop it. Anyway, um, <laughs> there you have it. One completed six zero one nine seven Lego City passenger train. Um, like I said, I'm writing a review on uh, this set for BMR, um, I hope to have it up possibly tomorrow, Depend, like, uh, depends on whether or not I can get photos tomorrow, I still need to get photos of for the article, also need to finish writing on the article, but <laughs> mostly get photos, and it's just been kind of dreary and terrible here um, this weekend here in Pennsylvania. Um, Hopefully tomorrow will be a little bit more 
a little bit better weather and I can get some nice photos for the article and um, get it up either either tomorrow or first thing uh, Tuesday morning. <laughs> but uh, I hope I hope you enjoyed watching this. Um, I hope I wasn't too boring. Um, let me just check here and see if anyone has any any final questions. KA1 Productions. Okay, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy you're here too. Steam Bricks. Is that a pen lug box car? Why, yes, it is. Um, this is indeed a pen lug box car. Um, this is based on the BMR PS1 uh, design, the one we, we sell instructions for. Um, there's a couple of changes. Um, I did use different tiles for the, uh, for the roof. Um, actually, I think that's the only thing I changed. I used different tiles for the roof. Um, and then I created uh, uh, these pen lug decals uh, for my club. Uh, they're based on the Reading Railroad uh, uh, logo of the, you know, uh, they're based on Reading Railroad uh, boxcar logos. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I um, don't currently have any plans to sell these, um, but if enough people are interested, we might, we might consider it. Um, Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Want to hear? Sure, I'd be interested in hearing a joke. <laughs> uh. Where do pencils come from? Where do pencils come from? Stop colors. All right, well, um, if there's, well, the train's done. <laughs> I guess that's it. Um, Glenn and I have talked about like doing more live streams for BMR. So um, if you missed this one, um, hopefully we'll be doing some more in the future. Um, I think it'd be pretty cool to do at least maybe a semi-regular, um, live stream on BMR. I don't know, you know, want to commit to anything quite yet. Um, since, you know, who knows, um, scheduling, you know, until we maybe like work out some scheduling or something, but I'd love to do more of these live streams, um, and hopefully get, uh, maybe more, uh, people, on them, <laughs> um, more than just you know building a set, but like actually like maybe possibly interviewing um, uh, some train builders, um, but you know like anything you know <laughs> like anything else that's that's uh, um, when we get to that sort of thing. So you know no no concrete plans yet, but um, anyway. Um, Look for look for a review on this on the BMR website this week. Um, Glenn Holland has already done a review on the cargo train set. Um, that's up right now. So if you go to the BMR the Brick Model Railroader, yeah, if you go to www.brickmodelrailroader, 
our website, you will find our find Glenn's review on that, um, as well as all the other wonderful articles we've written, <laughs> and hopefully more to come. We're working on trying to get more articles up. Um, we have some more builder interviews that we want to do. Um, and hopefully get back to more like some model spotlights and sort of that, that sort of thing. Um, I guess I'm, I don't know. <laughs> I guess I'm done now. Um, so, uh, um, uh, yeah. Let me know if you enjoyed this and if you want to see more of this. Um, you know, let us know. Um, and with that, I will say good night and happy building. <laughs>